Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at a very unique pair of Joy-Con alternatives for the Nintendo Switch, the Nook Series Joy-Con from Stoga Tech. And real quick, if you're new here, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date on everything happening with the channel. And with all that out of the way, let's take a look at these Raccoon or Tanuki themed Joy-Con. So I first came across the Nook Series Joy-Con on Instagram. I just saw a post come through and I thought they looked just so, I don't know, kind of silly and uh, kind of random that I thought it would be a fun thing to check out. I wasn't really expecting a whole lot out of them and was kind of just looking to get them for the novelty of it. But I do have to say when they showed up and I got my hands on them, I was surprised by a few of the features and the overall feel. While these things definitely aren't perfect, they are better than I expected. So we can take a look here. Uh, they do come in a couple different colors. I think that's shown on the back here. Yeah, so there's a blue version, a green version, and the brown. And I went with the brown just because I thought that was the most appropriate color for them being raccoon themed. Obviously going for the Tom Nook vibe from Animal Crossing. On Stoga's website, stogagame.com, they are listed as Nook series Joy-Con, but as you can see on the box here, they're uh, referred to as the J-Pad controller uh, for NS. So I think it's pretty clear that we're not dealing with uh, an officially licensed product here. That's what made me think that these are probably going to be pretty cheap feeling and, and to not expect too much out of them. But like I said, I, I was kind of surprised by a few things. So as you can see on the features here, these have some features that maybe the typical Joy-Con alternatives don't. You know, we've reviewed plenty of them on the channel here, uh, like the Hori Split Pad Pro and some other third-party controllers. And for the most part, those options don't have rumble included. So I was very pleased to see that these actually support rumble. And you've also got six axis motion control and uh, they're chargeable. And then you've also got turbo functionality and programmable rear triggers. So they definitely have a decent little feature set for what this is. And I guess right up front, uh, these go for $49.99 on Stoga's website, so they are the exact same price as the Split Pad Pro. Actually, $10 cheaper if you were going for one of the like custom design Split Pad Pro options. So for what they are, I do think that's a fair price. And here it is, the full J-pad setup here. So I, I did think it was kind of interesting that they come with this middle piece here, kind of like a Joy-Con grip style. Uh, connector so you can use this as a full controller. I do think it's a little odd how angled it is on the bottom here. Obviously they're they're trying to kind of angle it out like a, a pro controller but it does feel a little aggressive uh, with the with the angle there. I do think they could have gotten away really with just a, a straight piece like the standard Joy-Con grip because you've still got the angled uh, sides here. So it's a little odd, but really I was never intending to use these as a standalone controller. So it's cool if you're into it, but it's, it's no big deal that it's maybe not all that useful. There is one other interesting feature of the centerpiece is that it has this little compartment in there to store uh, two games and a micro SD card. So Another interesting feature, not the most useful thing, you know, I carry around plenty of games in my Switch case, so I don't really have any need to have something like this. I guess if you were using this as your primary controller and you wanted to take this over to a friend's house and just bring a couple games along with you, it's cool that it's there, but again, it's not the most useful thing. But then let's take these off. Get a better look at them when they're individual. And, you know, right off the bat, when I put these in my hand, they're surprisingly comfortable. I really like the curvature of the backside. It's a little thicker than the Split Pad Pro and kind of has these bulbous bottoms here that just feel really natural. And they're not too oversized either. Something like the Split Pad Pro is really trying to give you a pro controller like feel so they actually went with bigger joysticks and bigger buttons 
and because of that they kind of had to make more room for it so that's why when the split pad pro is attached to a switch it's it's pretty wide it's kind of gigantic but i'm kind of into this more compact feel and then you'll see at the top here the zl and zr triggers um, are just standard and they feel pretty decent and then you've got these little ears for the L and R buttons. And, you know, I guess that makes these pretty cute, pretty kawaii or whatever, but it's not the most ergonomic feeling thing. Yeah, I kind of end up clicking sort of the outside edge here. You know, you have to make sure that your fingers are kind of pulled up behind the back of the ears here to make sure you're clicking it. So it does feel ever so slightly in the way, but I got used to it really quickly and it wasn't a big deal and it's obviously part of the overall aesthetic, which like I said, I was kind of just looking at these for the novelty of it. I'm not really into the look of these necessarily, but I do think there is an audience for this. I do think there are some people who'd be like, oh, I love the look of that. That's what I've been looking for. I'm a huge Animal Crossing fan or whatever. So while it might not really be for me for personal preference, I do still think they look nice and, and there's a quality design to these. And you've also got kind of these little brown accents here at the bottom. So yeah, kind of interesting. And I guess now let's get these attached to the switch screen so you can see what that looks like. Click in really easy. And one thing I noticed, these won't wake your switch up, which is odd because these do have electronics inside, they're chargeable. But for whatever reason, if your switch is asleep and you attach these, uh, you just have to press the power button to wake your switch up. And there you go. So that's what these look like attached to the switch. And like I said, it's, it's not gonna be quite as wide as when you're using the Split Pad Pro. Let's take a look at the back. And there's the back side. And there's your programmable triggers. I'll talk about those a little more in a bit here. Right off the bat, there were just a few things that I really liked. Uh, like I said, overall, they feel really comfortable to hold and not unwieldy or anything. These are really nice feeling Joy-Con. They're definitely far more comfortable than the stock Joy-Con. And I also really like that they just attach to the rails like normal. They're flush on the top edge here and on the back. The Split Pad Pro, for whatever reason, kind of sits above the switch screen, which I don't know, I just don't love the look of. And also there is a slight bit of flex when you're using the Split Pad Pro. Sorry, I keep bringing that up, but it definitely makes the most sense to compare these against that. But these just feel far more solid on the rails. They just kind of feel just as solid as, as standard Joy-Con. So I really like that. There's just this feeling I have when playing with the Split Pad Pro where I'm like, am I doing damage to the rails by kind of causing that little flex there? And it just doesn't feel super solid. You get used to it and I, I kind of figured out how to hold it better, but I definitely prefer something like this. And then again, talking about the features, you'll see that there are USB-C ports in either side which led me to believe, oh, these don't charge when attached to the switch. You have to charge them individually, but that's not true. When you dock your switch with these attached or you just plug in a USB-C cable, these will charge just like normal, but they do also give you the option to charge them individually, which is kind of interesting. They do, I forgot to mention, they do come with a USB-A to USB-C cable. I just haven't opened it because I've already got plenty of those, but it is nice that that's included. And then, like I said, you know, you've got your motion and you've got your rumble. There's turbo functionality and the programmable triggers in the back. And I guess the way that works, uh, it's a little different than on the Split Pad Pro, but for turbo, you just hold, uh, you long press the button you want to assign turbo to. And while you're pressing that down, you also press the turbo button. And I believe you do the reverse of that to turn it off or when you shut your switch down or detach these from the switch, that'll be reset. So that's cool. I've got some other controllers that use the turbo function. It's not something I use often really, like maybe if I was playing a shooter or something like that, but it's cool to know that it's there. And then with the mappable triggers on the back, it's a little weird process. You have to long press the minus button until the Joy-Con starts vibrating, and then you press the button that you want assigned to the trigger and then after that you long press the plus button and then you click which trigger you want that button assigned to so a little bit of a process but it does work 
And yeah, I think that kind of covers it for everything uh, that's kind of surprising and good about these Joy-Con. So I guess now I will go through a few of the, the little drawbacks here. I'm gonna boot up my Animal Crossing game to show off a couple of those. Okay, so now we're, now we're in the game so I can show off a few things here. And actually, I'm gonna pop out to the menu real quick so I can talk about the first thing. You know, like I said, the overall feel of this is is pretty quality. The, all the buttons are plastic and clicky. There's none of that, you know, really soft rubber used anywhere. So when I was just kind of playing with them before actually playing a game, I was like, oh man, these are, these are way better than I expected. But then when I was navigating the Switch menu, I did notice, let's see if I can get it to happen. Yeah, see, so I'm actually pressing down the right side there. It's kind of hit or miss if the button press registers. And I've dealt with similar things on the other third-party controllers. The D-pad feels nice, but you kind of have to be conscious of how hard you're pressing it. Because it is possible to click the button in, but not have it register. If you give it a more forceful push, you can get it to register every time. But, you know, that's definitely unfortunate because you don't want to be thinking about that sort of thing when you're playing a game. I don't use the D-pad a ton, so that's maybe not the biggest deal, but that is one of the big advantages of having these Joy-Con alternatives. You've got the four directional D-pad instead of the individual buttons. I haven't found as much difficulty with the actual face buttons, which is good, but I did experience it like one or two times when playing Animal Crossing and I was holding down B to sprint. And every now and then, if I let off the pressure of my thumb a little bit, see there, I've kind of relaxed it just a little bit, and my character starts walking instead of running. And then if I give it just a little more force, it starts up again. But it does feel like the buttons are more responsive than the D-pad, so it, it occurs less there. But that's kind of a deal breaker for me to make this something that I can confidently use all the time, which is a shame because it's super comfortable. So, you know, that's probably the biggest drawback I've come across with these. The other thing, I'm gonna get a regular Joy-Con to show you. When I first started playing, I was like, is it just me or are the thumbsticks ever so slightly smaller? And hopefully that comes across on camera, but yeah, you can see that they are. Um, not by a ton, but the Joy-Con sticks are already kind of tiny, so I'm not sure why they went with a smaller size. I would use like thumb caps on my regular Joy-Con just to make them slightly larger. And when I took the thumb cap off this and placed it on here, it was just loose, you know, it didn't fit snugly. And then beyond that, the, the sticks do feel ever so slightly strange, um, beyond them being like a little bit smaller. And I'm gonna try and get close here without knocking the camera. And if you see here, the, the shield that would prevent dust and stuff like that getting underneath, potentially causing drift, uh, is, is very small and doesn't match the size of the hole. So you can actually see underneath, you can see the metal peg of the actual stick. So that has me a little worried that these could get stuff on the inside and eventually be drifting. And then they also have, I'd say the tension is just ever so slightly too high on the sticks. You can kind of feel the resistance is very strong on your left and right and you're up and down. So it's maybe not a perfectly smooth feeling when you're rotating it. You can kind of feel the increased tension in those directions, but that's like the least of my complaints with the sticks. I, I, I just don't like that they're smaller <laughs> and that they are probably susceptible to eventually getting drift. So that was another one of the big drawbacks for me is that the sticks just don't feel quite right. And then the last thing, and this isn't a major drawback because I do have to commend Stoga for including rumble with these uh, because it seems like something almost all third party controllers omit. So I was really excited like, oh, these actually have rumble. So I have to give him props for including that, but it is definitely not HD rumble. So it's not nearly as adaptive. It's just kind of like strong or soft and let's see if I can chop something down and see if I can get the sound to come across here. 
start chopping the tree down. I'm gonna get this, try and get this up close here, see if you can hear it. Not sure if that came across. Uh, the rumble feels pretty decent. You know, you can tell it's, it's not HD rumble. Um, but for whatever reason, the left Joy-Con for me can get really loud. It's nothing too crazy, but you definitely notice it. The Joy-Con are kind of loud already, um, and this left side will just... Sometimes it's when I'm doing something minor too, and it's like, whoa, why is that buzzing so much? So just be prepared for that. Like, yes, these do have rumble, but it's not nearly as good as the standard Joy-Con. And then really, I think that's about all there is to say about these you know as far as features go you've got pretty much everything that the standard Joy-Con do um, other than NFC functionality. I think I forgot to mention that. They don't include NFC, but they are chargeable. They've got motion controls. They've got rumble. And then they've got the added features of having turbo and the programmable back triggers. So a decent feature set. And I think for the price and the overall quality, even though there's some definite misses there, I think these are an interesting option, especially if you're someone who's really into the look of of these or you know you're a big Animal Crossing fan I do think these are pretty competitive when you put them up against something like the split pad pro although with the split pad pro I've had far better reliability with button inputs and the sticks on the split pad pro the thumbsticks do feel quite a bit better so just keep that in mind if you're looking to pick a pair of these up so yeah, all in all, I guess I can say I was pretty surprised by these, kind of just getting these uh, for the meme or the kind of silliness of it. But then, you know, it made me think, I really wish someone would do like a higher quality version of these, just a slightly higher quality. Get the button inputs right, get some better joysticks on here. You know, they don't have to be raccoon themed or Animal Crossing themed either but I really love the feel. So I would love a pair of like pro Joy-Con that are shaped about like this, attached to the rails like this, have rumble, have motion controls and all that good stuff, but then address a few of those issues. And those would be the Joy-Con I would use 100% of the time. And obviously too, I guess that's the one other thing I didn't mention. These are totally dockable because you've got nothing going across the back there. So I think that does it. If you want to check these out for yourself, they're available at stogagame.com. I'll, of course, leave a link down in the description. And yeah, I think that's going to do it. So if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like on your way out and also consider subscribing. And until the next video, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.